Morning, students. Good morning. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, doctor. Okay, thank you. Um, today we are going to tackle the last chapter that is to be included in the final examination, which is entitled Teaching Vocabulary and Spelling. You have to know that uh, uh, here uh, the chapter uh, implies that we have a relationship between these two um, parts of language. When we talk about vocabulary, okay, and then we are we are having something which is different, that is spelling. Throughout the, uh, I mean, the topics that we have in the chapter, we are going to draw this relationship. So I want you just to consider why to have it in one title from the beginning, okay? <coughs> uh, for EFL students, vocabulary is the most important element leading to reading comprehension. You see now. First of all, we have the relationship between vocabulary and reading comprehension. The question why? Here, to answer, we are going to consider that, I mean, lots of vocabulary will be provided to EFL learners through what? Reading through texts, okay, uh, if, if to be, uh, I mean, compared with, with the spoken uh, activities, okay, vocabulary will be found more where in reading uh, text rather than here in, in, in uh, spoken activities. Why? Because here, if you consider, okay, a single page in a novel, for example, contains so many, I mean, words and expressions uh, as to be compared with the, a conversation to be heard by, by learners, okay? So here, the amount of vocabulary that is found in reading text would be more. And that's why here the connection between vocabulary and reading comprehension. Because here, you have to know that the vocabulary that we are going to what? To, uh, to get, to gain, from what? From sources, where? in reading okay if we are talking about efl learners you see now why why to say efl learners because here uh, they are not going to acquire uh, new vocabulary from the uh, i mean outside uh, 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 their own environment because uh, here uh, the, the, the language that they learn, that is English, will be foreign. So it is not used outside the class. So they are not going to acquire vocabulary uh, throughout the, 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 the spoken media. And that's why, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the most important way just to collect and gain new vocabulary through what? Through reading text. Is that okay? Yes, 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 doctor. doctor. Yes. Okay. Without extensive vocabulary teaching and practice, EFL learners will not be able to reach the required proficiency standard of reading. Of course. Here, uh, if we are not going to extend, to expand the amount of vocabulary, we cannot expect uh, learners uh, are able to read any text which uh, normally contains new vocabulary okay so our uh, our mission our duty as teacher just to maximize their own uh, vocabulary store uh, w which make learners uh, okay flexible to to tackle any text that is to be given to them got the point now so here without maximizing the the, um, the amount of vocabulary we cannot expect that we are we are having good readers because they are not able to tackle a new text with the new vocabulary the teaching of uh, vocabulary is essentially the teaching of the meaning of uh, words in situation or in context yes so what does it mean here it means that we are not tackling words singly or uh, individually here we are not behind dictionary work here you are uh, uh, behind 
using vocabulary in context. So here, all in all, uh, we are behind what? Contextual meaning, not dictionary meaning. So when we are going to tackle vocabulary, as a, uh, as a method to, to, to teach them to, uh, to uh, foreign learners, we are behind what? Contextual meaning rather than dictionary meaning. Here, uh, it, is, it is not only just to consider uh, context. We are going to consider the word itself because it, it has many or multi uses. Suppose that you have the word bank, you know bank, B-A-N-K. Okay. Yes. Definitely. If you consider yes. how many meanings that uh, we have, if it, if it is to be considered singularly, we don't know unless we put it where in a context. In a so context. we are going to say banks are commercial institutions, as to be compared to another with another sentence that is just to say what? Okay. The I went the by the uh, I went by the bank of the river. I went by. Okay, or I crossed, if, if, if you want just to say, the bank of the... So here, uh, 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 the meaning of bank will be different according to what? Context. Context. Uh, the context. Context. Okay. context. Unless we put it in a sentence, we cannot consider uh, its own meaning. The other point now, and that's why here, uh, the word book, okay? That is the, the, the written orthographic, uh, uh, let me say, uh, 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 subject that we, we, we are, or an object that is to, to, to have uh, been compared with other meaning that is what? Uh, uh, if we say, I book a, a flight ticket, okay? So being a verb and being a, a noun will be, will be related to what? to its position in, in a sentence, in a context, also. yeah. So in this case, we are behind contextual. Teaching vocabulary is not primarily a matter of teaching single words, as we uh, said earlier. However, lexical item or a unit of meaning may be one word, by the way, one word, not one words. Uh, here, we, there is a printing mistake one word or may consist of two or more words what does it mean when we are talking about lexical item what does it mean here we are going to talk about li uh, language units okay when we consider meaning of course we are going to consider one word or two words and just say compound words okay okay so uh, here if it yes. is to be considered as a, a, a language unit of course we are going to uh, um, uh, talk about words, okay? Words singly as a unit, not as meaning. And this is the difference here. If we consider words as, uh, as uh, uh, I mean, uh, lexical units, we are going to tackle them individually because here uh, we are going to specify that this is a noun, this is an adjective, this is an adverb, okay? So lexically, we are going to have individual words just to describe them grammatically okay or lexically uh, lexically here we are going to consider all these things okay as units in what a language system but if we consider meaning no we are going to have uh, a context to consider what does it mean is that okay lexically lexically they are considered as units as words whether one word or double word. You know when we are going to have compound words, you see. That is morphologically speaking, yes. you know, here. But when we tackle meaning, no, the case is different because we are going to uh, consider context. On the other hand, uh, one word can have several meanings, of course. Uh, I mean, we just uh, explained um, I mean, uh, examples for these things, and we know uh, one word can have many meanings. You see now the word get as a verb. How many meanings do we have? Multiple meanings. Okay. A lot. You a see lot now? So here the idea, uh, it is, it is uh, I mean, it is, uh, uh, context will, will, will decide. But if we consider get as a lexical uh, item, as a unit, we are going to see this is a verb. Okay. It is one word. 
It is one word, okay? Uh, lexically uh, speaking. But when we talk of meaning, the case will be different and we are going to uh, consider it. Also, Doctor, the verb have have a lot of meanings. Yeah, here the idea, the idea is how to consider uh, vocabulary uh, as units uh, uh, or as uh, 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 I mean being uh, within uh, other units. So, meaningful speaking, uh, a context will be considered. Uh, uh, I mean, lexically or let me say. Uh, uh, um, uh, considering language unit, we are going to consider them singly. So you are going to compare between the two consideration. Cons uh, here, the two concentration as units or as meaning, uh, both concentration will, will be what will be required. The most important thing uh, the students need to know about a lexical item are its written and spoken form and its uh, uh, usual meaning. Okay, so here I want you just to, uh, I mean, have an idea about how can students deal with what? With vocabulary. They are going to consider uh, basic factors first, okay, and then they move to other, other dimensions. So, uh, dimension number one, okay, that is what? How is it to be spoken and how is it to be written? That is, yeah, I mean, um, uh, the first thing that uh, students are going to consider vocabulary. They, they should know how can it be pronounced and how can it be what? Written. Okay? I mean the spelling. And then the basic meaning. So these are the basic factors that are related to uh, students' concentration to vocabulary. Okay. Is that, is that I mean, enough? No, we are going to say there is another dimension. What is it? However, there are additional aspects which also needed to be learned. It's a grammar. It's collocational links, connotations, appropriateness of use, okay, and relationships with other items in English in the student's first language. You see how many considerations? You see now? Yes. So we have the first dimension, uh, what we call the basic uh, uh, factors related to, uh, I mean, uh, 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 vocabulary. That is what? The elementary factors, if we say. The elementary factors. First of all, if, uh, if students are exposed to new vocabulary, they, uh, the first thing that they want just to learn how, how to utter, how to pronounce this word, and then how is it to be spoken, and the usual meaning. And then we move to another dimension, and this is an advanced, you see, an advanced dimension. That is what? To consider all these aspects. Grammar. How is it to be used? Is it a noun? Is it, is it an adjective? Is it an adverb? Okay, what is the function of this word? This is another dimension, another aspect, which is advanced from the basic. Collocational links, you know, collocation with, with, uh, with which word it comes. If we say, for example, a verb, depend, depend on, okay, deal, deal with. This is what we call collocation. Which comes with what? Another point now, if we say collocation, you know the word collocation. Connotation, that is what the, uh, uh, the literal meaning, connotation, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, denotation yes. is the literal meaning. Connotation is the metaphorical meaning. Sorry, the metaphorical meaning of of, uh, uh, of the word. And this is another dimension and another advanced dimension. Usual meaning. Uh, this is as to be compared with the usual meaning. Uh, usual meaning. Okay, with the usual meaning. So basically, we know the literal meaning. That is the usual meaning. Okay, and then we move to another dimension. That is connotation when we are going to have the word metaphorically. Okay? Uh, is that, is that uh, I mean, understood when we are, yes. talk ab we are talking yes, about these yes, dimensions? Okay. Yes, yes. Appropriateness of use, yes. And this is very important because here we are moving from linguistic factor to paralinguistic factor. This is when we are going to have the pragmatic factors that are related to what? Uh, the, the situation, 
and the, the setting, the okay, all these things, okay, rather than the context, I mean the, the appropriateness of its use that is related to pragmatic factors or let me say um, non-linguistic factors. The use of language. Yeah, formal yeah, and yeah, informal. Yeah. And relationship with other items in English. You see now, when we are talking about uh, 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 EFL learners, uh, I mean uh, English as a foreign language, okay? Uh, another dimension that is what what is this relation uh, what what kind of relationship between this word and the native language what is to be translated to how can i translate it get the point now this is this is another dimension and it is an advanced dimension rather than just to be what a basic or elementary dimension so how many dimensions that we are going to have for EFL, or let me say, those who are having not uh, not English only, uh, any other uh, um, uh, foreign language, they are going to have two dimensions: elementary dimensions, and we consider wh what are the aspects, and then what do we have? Advanced uh, and additional, if we are going to say, uh, dimensional uh, uh, that that are related to grammar language appropriateness or let, uh, let me say the pragmatic factors and then the other factors that are related to the relationship between native language uh, uh, of the learner and the foreign language the connotation the met metaphorical meaning of of these words got the point now so i want you just to focus on these things because they are very important what are the dimensions of uh, 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 vocabulary uh, on the part of uh, FL, if I say FL, why to say FL? Because I'm not going to specify uh, uh, one language. FL learners. Is that okay? Doctor, yes, he has four points, and Sorry? the advanced have five points. Well, uh, by the way, uh, if if you look. Uh, under this explanation, you are going to find these things are, uh, uh, I mean, uh, explained in, in detail. We are going to tackle them. Just wait yeah. to know them uh, uh, more clearly. Okay. Number yes. one, form. What, do, what does it mean? This is the, the first dimension, elementary dimension. Pronunciation and spelling. The learner has to know what a word sounds like, its pronunciation, and what it looks like in, in, in its spelling. And this is very important to, to draw the relationship, as we said from the beginning of this uh, lecture. What do, what do we have? We have a relationship between uh, um, vocabulary and spelling because uh, firstly, we are going to have the word to be uttered and then we are going to draw the relationship. How is it to be written? And this is very important. You know why? Because if we specify our talk to English, okay, uh, the case will be difficult. Why? Because there is no one-to-one -one relationship between letters and sounds. Okay? So it will be a complicated matter between spelling, okay, and pronunciation. The word is, is, is pronounced in a way that is different from the way that it is written. For example, we have silent, silent uh, letters, okay? If we say the word no, K-N-O-W, okay? So, it is pronounced, okay, an hour, the, the word hour, okay? H-O-U-R, okay? Here we have silent uh, uh, letters of, uh, they are not to be pronounced. So, drawing the relationship between spelling and sound will be difficult, or... Uh, a complicated matter and you have to consider this from the beginning now so this is uh, one of the elementary dimension okay elementary dimension okay we move to another dimension meaning denotation the meaning of a word or expression uh, uh, in uh, uh, is what, what is referred to uh, or to denote okay in the real world this is uh, uh, given in uh, dictionaries as its definition okay again this is another elementary dimension that is what the literal meaning or the denotation of the of the word okay the the lexical meaning or the uh, the dictionary meaning of of the word 
So you see now we are going to move gradually because here we move from elementary dimension to what? To advanced dimension. Is that okay? It is very clear. Yes, okay. No, okay. No, no. We move to what? To grammar. This is what? An advanced dimension. The grammar of a new item will need to be taught if this is not obviously covered by general grammatical rules. What does it mean? Here, if we consider words as vocabulary, okay, words will not be the same way. What does it mean? Here, if we consider a word that is to be a noun in, uh, in, in certain contexts and a verb in, in another, so they, uh, they occupy different, uh, 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 I mean, grammatical functions. As we have the, 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 the example for book, okay, book as a noun and book as a verb. So they are going to have different grammatical functions. But there is a, a general, if we say, talk, uh, when we have another uh, point, that is what, a general rule for certain words, just like auxiliaries. If we, if we tackle is, are, am as auxiliaries, they are three different words, but they are having a general uh, uh, rule to, to, co to govern them or to, just to, uh, to include them uh, uh, all, okay? They are used just to ex express what as uh, auxiliary uh, progressive aspects, right? So they are what? They are all in all. Three different words with a general rule. Is that okay? Doctor, mm. uh, please about uh, denotation. I couldn't understand, okay. understand it. Yeah, Could you yeah. repeat it? Yeah, yeah. Denotation, uh, the, the literal meaning, you know literal meaning? If we are going to have yes, uh, a word, okay, the literal meaning that is what the uh, the basic meaning of the of the word, okay. If we are going to have a, a word that is to be used metaphorically, this is just to be compared with denotation. So we have denotation that is the literal meaning, okay, the literal. You know the word literal, the basic yes, meaning, sir. and then. To be compared with what connotation? That is what the metaphorical meaning. You know the word metaphoric. I mean, when the word when the word yes. implies yeah. When when I say, for example, he is a line. He is a line. Okay. Basically, a line. When I say, for example, Tom is a line, but I'm not uh, uh, having the, uh, the literal meaning of a line here. I'm I'm going to say that he is brave. Okay. Okay, so here line literally it is uh, it, it refers to an animal, but here metaphorically it means that Tom is brave. So, doctor, uh, <coughs> denotation means literal. Literal, literal, literal. Connotation. You have to consider these. Okay, connotation with C. Okay. Connotation is what metaphorical meaning. Denotation is what literal meaning. Okay, so uh, if we consider uh, denotation, we are with the elementary, you know the word elementary, elementary dimension. But when we are going to consider connotation, we are, uh, we are having what? Advanced, advanced uh, dimension. Yes, Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Then uh, here we, we, we uh, explain something about uh, the grammatical rule, whether uh, to be tackled, uh, uh, I mean, specifically, or we have a general rule, we explain this. Calication, you know, calication, it refers to the way words to co -aka. you know the word co -aka. that is which comes with which, with, with other resorts. Yes, right? okay, Do, doing, yeah. you see, when we say doing, doing homework, okay, not making homework, that is what we call calication. Okay. Is an advanced advanced level? Sorry. Doctor. Uh, uh, Calcation uh, here. Calcation yes, advanced level, because here, uh, once we are going to have a grammar, it means that we begin with advanced level, advanced dimension. By the way, not level, Ad uh, advanced dimension of vocabulary. 
You see now, uh, we are moving gradually. You see now, we, we begin with home, then we mean with, with grammar, and then with, we have collocation. Yes. So definitely it is what? An advanced, advanced dimension. Okay. When I say, for example, wash, what? Wash dishes. Okay. Wash, what? Clothes. Okay. But That's uh, 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 can we have, uh, I mean, things just like this with other, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 can I say clean dishes? Wash dishes. Okay, to wash dishes, say, not to clean afraid dishes. Of, afraid okay. of, for example, talk about this also you can say. What is it? These are talk examples. I, I'm giving you yes. examples. Okay, I say wash dishes. Okay, not to clean dishes. No, Victor, Because if we are talking about the clean dishes, what does it mean? It means that they are all, uh, uh, completely at home, you know, when we are going to have dishes. For example, we have uh, dishes to be filled, you know. When I say to clean dishes, it means that to be eaten totally, not to be washed, you see now. Because yeah, here, yeah. when you say clean, it, it, it moves to uh, connotation. That is the, the metaphorical meaning. To clean dishes here, okay, means that yes. it is to be eaten, you know the word eaten, okay, completely, without, yes. without uh, uh, I mean, leaving any uh, uh, peace, okay. Yes. Uh, but to wash this is no. It means that is washing. Okay. So we are That's not going to say yeah. We are not going to say this. So here, th this is related to collocation. Wash dishes. Okay. If we if we consider not to clean dishes. Yeah. Uh, then uh, connotation. It is the emotional or the positive negative uh, uh, association that it implies. A moist chocolate cake. You know here, moist is is to be used uh, metaphorically. Okay, uh, as compared with dam. You know the word uh, uh, here. If they are to be used, okay. If yes. they are to be used uh, uh, literally, these words moist and damp is to be uh, used with weather. You know weather, weather, yes. weather or yes. climate. Yes. Okay, but uh, here they are used with what? With cake. So moist is okay. Is uh, is used with what? With cake. We say moist chocolate cake, but not damp cake, because this is uh, this is unacceptable, and that's why. We are talking about connotation. We have to know, is it possible to use it this way? Is it accept uh, acceptable to be used this way? Because this is not our language. This is the language that is used by other community. Uh, I mean, other community agree just to, to use moist chocolate cake, but it is not acceptable at all to say damp cake. And that is... That is connotation, when we talk about connotation. Connotation, the metaphorical meaning that is agreed by the community uh, uh, or, or the language community, okay? Or what we call uh, things that are socially accepted by native speakers. We are, we yes. are not allowed, we are not authorized just to, what, to, to use words as we like. No. Is it acceptable? Is it acceptable? Uh, here, here, uh, 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 you are not going to consider. Uh, uh, I mean, the meaning uh, as you wish. Okay. Suppose that here, if we want just to consider these things, with, for example, uh, I mean, to be compared with the native language. Okay. You see now, yes. if we consider the following, uh, the words in in uh, in English. And what do we have to be, uh, I mean, in, in Arabic? We have envelope, you know the word envelope, envelope. Yes. We have condition, we have adverb. If you consider the translation for these three different words in Arabic, it will be darf. But envelope is what? Is uh, an envelope for letters, you know, letters. Okay? Yes. Condition is the circumstances, okay? 
and then we have the uh, uh, adverb is the grammatical term but all in all they are to be translated in, uh, in Arabic as what? the same word yes Another point now? but you have to know how to be used and what what uh, 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 I mean uh, what is the, the meaning of each individual uh, vocabulary that you have this is the idea this is this is not connotation by the way but th that is the difference between native language and what uh, foreign language you see now it's just like uh, again here in English we have the word uncle okay the word uncle here in, in Arabic we have two words not one It is to be differentiated in yes. Arabic, but it is not differentiated. Okay, uncle in Arabic. Okay, we have either just to say what, am, or khal. But here it is one word in, in English. How can you consider it's the difference? How can you uh, yes. consider the difference? You are going to say uncle as my my father's brother, or uncle as my what my mother's brother. Doctor, we can get it uh, through context, uh, context, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, here. Uncle, you, okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, if it is the context, uh, if I say, uh, uh, my uncle is coming to visit us. But uh, here, uh, how can you translate it to Arabic? We say, Ammi or Khali? Khal. No, I well, say my uncle. No, because it comes with both. It comes with both. We can say father or mother. If it is, if it is to be said in another sentence, okay, okay. If I am going to identify, okay, my uncle who is my my father's brother. In this case, it will be uh, uh, translated uh, correctly. But if, yes. if it is not to be um, followed by another identification or a clarification, it will be vague. How can we I have to meet. Yeah. Got the point now? Uh, that is the difference between but Arabic and English. Uh, uh, I mean, here, as an example, but here, differences uh, between uh, uh, native language and foreign language will exist if, if, if we are going to consider. Anyway, this is not not included here in the in the book, but uh, you have to consider it as one of the dimension as it is uh, found uh, uh, before these points. That is what the relationship with other items in English and in the students' first language. Appropriateness. <clears throat> it means the appropriateness to use an item in certain contexts. We is used in writing, but a cry is used in speech. The same meaning, by the way. But in written form, you are going to say what? Weep. In spoken form, you are going to say cry. It's just like when you say, for example, uh, 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 words that are to be um, abbreviated, you know? Uh, the abbreviation, uh, for example, uh, in, uh, yes. is, is accepted in, uh, in a spoken form. But you should you write it in full where in, in in the written form in the written form okay say he didn't okay and he did not okay so the idea here which is appropriate which 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 media accept this or that so you have to be uh, i mean careful with these things and appropriate moves to to another uh, dimension that is what is accepted or what is to be, uh, I mean, suitable to the situation or the, the pragmatic uh, factors, as we said earlier, okay? Sometimes, you see, now when we talk about appropriateness, uh, um, we have some sort of, uh, of language uh, transfer. Can you imply, uh, can you, uh, let me say, uh, 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 Consider what do we have in Arabic tradition or uh, rituals. Uh, in English, it, it is it is impossible. 
here uh, when we are going to consider the way that you are going to use certain expressions you have to consider how is it to be used by the foreign community it is not just to, uh, to impose what you have in the, in, the, uh, in the native language to be put in, in English and in the, this will be, this will be a, a mistake uh, in this case you are going to use um, for example English words Arabically you know English words Arabically what does it mean? it means that you are going to uh, to involve something that is You are going to involve something, sorry, that is uh, not found in the in the foreign culture, and this is this is a cultural factor. That is what you use something that we use it in Arabic, but it is not to be used in the same way in in English, and this is what we call it is inappropriate because this is not to be used by by uh, by English people. Your point now. Clear up yes. this point? Yes. Uh, yes. That, is, yes. that is the appropriateness here. To use what is used by the foreign community. Okay, considering the cultural differences here. Uh, okay. You know the word dinner? You know the word dinner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we have dinner and supper. We have dinner and supper. You know the word supper? As you yes. 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 yes, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay, greeting, by the way, good evening and good afternoon, okay. In, in Arabic, we have one, uh, one way, okay, yes. just to uh, reflect these things. But in English, no, it is timed, you know, from 12 to, to 5 is what, and from 5 till the midnight will be what, you see now. And this, this will be related to the appropriateness. You are coming and say good evening uh, at 2, it will not be accepted because this is not the way that they... They are using. The other point now. This is the, this is what we what we call appropriateness. Any questions so far? Any questions? Yeah, it is yeah. very clear. Doctor. It is useful to look at the relationship of meaning or, or on the item or the meaning of others uh, as follows. Okay. Is that okay with with the with vocabulary? No, you have to know the relationship among vocabulary. What does it mean? As we know that the way that you are going to maximize your vocabulary, you may have words of similar meaning. So what do we call them? Synonyms. They are items that mean the same or near the same. Bright, clever, smart, Okay, and uh, one one synonyms of the intelligent. So here, uh, here, uh, what are things to be considered? Okay, uh, first of all, the two dimensions, the, the elementary and and advanced dimension, that is related to the word itself. But we move to another uh, now uh, stage. What kind of relationship among uh, words? What are the synonyms? What are the antonyms? Okay, this is another stage. So the first stage is just to know the word itself. Then we move to another uh, stage. These are the stages, by the way. Now the stage number one, knowing the word itself, how to tackle the word itself. And then we are going to what? To move to another stage. This is stage number two. That is what? To see what are the relationship among vocabulary, among words. The first relationship, what do we have? Synonyms. And that's why uh, uh, here uh, in certain courses that you tackled, you have to give the similar meaning, okay, of the words that you know. Okay, this is just to address two things. First of all, to, to make uh, 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 language flexible, because here instead of having one word, okay, you are going to have two. This is one. Second, that is to, uh, uh, to, to know uh, the context itself, uh, if it is uh, accepting just to, uh, I mean, shift one word instead of the other, okay? Uh, so uh, this will make flexibility of, of, of uh, uh, I mean, the flexibility of language use, this is one. Second, it maximizes your vocabulary. Instead of having one word, you are going to have what? Two. 
antonyms. They are the items that mean the opposites. And with this, you have to know whether with synonym and with antonym, this is related to your uh, uh, language experience. What does it mean? You are not going to have the same vocabulary uh, uh, throughout your uh, uh, language development, being a beginner and then uh, uh, here uh, you are advancing to other levels till you are going to have advanced learners. You see now, you are not going to have the same vocabulary store. So with this, you are going to have something to consider that maximizing your vocabulary is related to your language experience. You are going to uh, to, uh, to advance, okay? Uh, throughout the, um, I mean, you are you are going to advance your vocabulary store uh, throughout your uh, language development. And in this case, uh, here, uh, once you are going to be exposed with the new vocabulary, you are going to check your your uh, your uh, I mean uh, vocabulary store. Will it be possible to use it to have synonyms? Will it be useful just to uh, to have uh, antonyms? I'm going to give you an example for this. You remember when uh, you, you, you have, uh, I mean, unseen passages in, in comprehension. You remember? You, you, were, you were required just to have synonyms for, for words that are uh, new to you and it is not to be read, uh, uh, I mean, earlier. What does it mean? Here you are going to check your, your, your experience, your, your language experience your vocabulary store experience uh, can you can you reach uh, the level that you are going to give the synonym for these new words or not of course you are going to study the, the context in which is, it is used and then you are going to have yeah. the okay and this this will be not the same what does it mean you are going to vary what does it mean some students are able to, others are, um, uh, I mean, 50-50, the others are failing totally to, 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 to have, uh, and, and this will be clear by the correction, okay? Those who are able to, just to, to, to reach uh, the meaning, of course, throughout the, the reading of the, uh, the context itself, they are able just to provide uh, uh, synonyms depending on what? Their own uh, experience, it's language great. background. The other point now, and that's why the, the study of the relationship among vocabulary is related to language experience and vocabulary store. The other point now, and this is very important. So, synonyms, antonyms, hyponyms, what does it mean? The, uh, uh, they are items that serve as specific examples of a general concept. What does it mean? If we say animal, <coughs> animal is what? A category, you know? So they are going to be examples for the category. Cat, lion, dog, what are they? Hyponyms of animal. Animal is what? A category. Okay? So you are going to, uh, 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 I mean, classify words according to, uh, to categories, if you, uh, if you consider. Then, yes. co, yes. you see now, co-hyponyms, what does, or coordinate? they are other items, I, I want you just to consider the differences, because they are very important, and they are going to be required in the exam. The difference between hyponyms and co-hyponyms, no, or coordinate, they are other items that, uh, that are the same kind of the thing, same kind of the thing. So first we have category, because they are not the same. Cat and lion are not the same. Because cat is what? Animate, uh, animate, uh, okay? Uh, animal, a wild, a wild uh, lion is a wild animal, okay? Uh, here, uh, if we consider the, the other uh, category, red, blue, green, they are belonging to the same kind. That is what? Color. Colors, yes. The other point now. So. I want you just to consider the difference between the two. Hyponym and co -hyponym. Superordinate, what does it mean? They are general concepts that cover specific items. What does it mean, superordinate? They are general concepts. If, if we are going to consider, for example, abstract words, you know, abstract words, they are going to, for example, we are, we are going to say, for example, the word philosophy. What is philosophy? 
it is a general concept okay that uh, okay that covers a specific uh, uh, let me say uh, items if we say for example philosophical theories philosophers all these things okay so it is a general concept to cover other specific items translation they are words or expression in the students first time of course here uh, if we consider this uh, comparatively with synonyms of course we are going to give the meaning in the native language the other point now with translation giving the meaning in the native language as compared with what with synonym given the meaning in the same language clear clear or yes, not yes, yes, yes. so yes, when, with, with synonyms we are going to give the meaning in what in the same language in with the, the translation language. we are going to give the meaning in the native language <clears throat> Now, uh, here uh, they are words and expression in the first uh, language of students. They, they, they are similar in meaning to the item being taught, but have a slightly different connotation or, or context of use that is, uh, th that is interesting to explore. And this is very important. You remember the meaning of, uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, the words that we said that uh, envelope adverb and circumstances or let me say condition yeah the context will differ okay when we say the word in arabic okay uh, here the context will will differ according to the to, to the uh, i mean context that we are going to have <clears throat> uh, and uh, as we have the word bank also okay uh, here the same word but with different context okay and it will be translated translated or to be given the meaning differently according to the context there are uh, two okay there are broadly two kinds of uh, of words namely content words and structure or function words here this is a classification of words okay is related to their grammatical function and this is very important this classification content words and function words, is related to grammatical consideration let us content words that are words which refer to things ideas corresponding to nouns you see in action uh, corresponding here with content words we have a relationship between grammar and meaning what does it mean if we have a noun it is related to the meaning and it is related to the to, to to the way that it is to be considered as a noun or as a uh, as a verb okay the grammatical uh, i mean form it, it takes or the grammatical function it takes okay and it is to be considered singly and this is very important if i say a noun okay it can be uh, uh, i mean understood by by itself without having it in uh, in a sentence if i say for example teacher okay you you listen to this word and then you consider that this is a noun okay and it is si uh, singular okay that is by itself without having it in, in what in a sentence okay uh, and then it is it is uh, related to meaning if we talk about teacher okay unless we know what what does it mean the, uh, i mean the, the the person or who is responsible just to uh, explain uh, describe for example or facilitate learning uh, process it, uh, here this is the definition of a teacher you are going to have what uh, i mean a complete comprehension of this word so here meaning and grammar will be considered with content words okay uh, they they uh, they have meaning of their own and reflect our experiences in life so structure or function words these are important for making sentences and are difficult to teach each one of them is a teaching item in a syllabus uh, the, the categories are preposition conjunction auxiliary verbs article personal pronouns relative pronouns demonstrative objective and structural other so 
here with function words these are not to be given singly they are they are to be in sentences just to uh, to be understood this is one why to say that they are difficult to teach why because they are meaningless if they are to be considered singly now if i say for example the word man you can consider in your mind what does it mean you are going to have an image uh, in your mind about this uh, this word but if i if i'm going to ask you give me the meaning of is single what is it without sentence without a sentence say. what is it okay what what is the meaning of is nothing so it is difficult to be to be taught because they are not going to be tackled what singly unless i am going to put it where in a context and this uh, involved that uh, beginners will face a difficulty to to uh, i mean uh, to consider what uh, what does it mean okay unless they are going to be advanced learners they are not going to consider what the, what, what are they uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, and what what is to be understood from uh, their uh, their use take a uh, preposition also do you know that prepositions are very very uh, difficult to to control and uh, to uh, i mean to, to use do you think that uh, do you think that here uh, when we talk about uh, english prepositions are they uh, are they easily to be used of course not because you see if you are going to consider how many meanings uh, they are uh, they are having for each context you are going to to say that i cannot control yes diverse meaning okay whether uh, whether uh, literally or metaphorically okay consider he is in a trouble he is in a trouble you know literally literally uh, if we talk about in as a preposition of a place okay uh, it means that it is inside okay inside something concrete so, something yes. to be included but if i say he is in a trouble is he really in a trouble as a position or is is, is a trouble uh, no this is uh, not uh, 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 you see now so how can you convince uh, uh, beginners about the meaning of prepositions in this case because you are going to tell them from the beginning okay uh, suppose that you have uh, students or uh, pupils in the primary school they cannot consider what, what what is the meaning of metaphor how can you consider a sentence which is found in the textbook in which you have in as a metaphorical use and then you just explain to them that in is used for a place okay a, pre a place preposition that is to mean inside so uh, suppose that the pupil is raising hand and saying uh, do we have a place just like trouble and we have something inside how can you convince him is that okay yes to yes <clears throat> so that's why they are difficult to teach especially for what uh, beginners okay and you know the examples you see now articles uh, you see definite and indefinite articles by the way you know how many how many uses for definite and uh, zero article for example in which case we have zero article in which case we have a, a, de a, a definite article or indefinite article and how is it to be used see so many things that are difficult to be tackled okay you cannot no, control we learn in grammar. Yeah. We learn yeah, in grammar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Demonstrative. You know demonstrative. This, that, these, those. Okay. Um, uh, you see, um, structural uh, uh, adverbs. You see, adverbial. If we talk about uh, adverbs, you see now. Even when we talk about, for example, prepositional phrase or or other uh, con grammatical construction. There is another classification of vocabulary. There is vocabulary we use and vocabulary we understand. This is another classification based on uh, vocabulary use. What does it mean? You have to imagine that we have 
uh, um, three circles in our mind. The smallest one that is uh, words that you know and you use. And then we move to another uh, uh, bigger uh, circle that is words that you know. And then we move to another uh, bigger circle that includes the two, uh, I mean, uh, four mentioned circles. That is words that you don't know and you don't use. Here in this classification, if we consider the first two circles, words you use and words you know, of course, uh, they are different. How? Because if we consider the amount of vocabulary, of course, the words, words you use would be smaller. Yes. Okay. Uh, here, here, how can you discover that when you are going to be exposed to something just to be read? You are going to have a textbook, okay? When you read, when you read, you have lots of vocabulary that you know. You say, well, I know them. But you are not using them. Only you know. But you don't use. Why? Because here the matter of use is related to uh, uh, your uh, ability to express your own ideas. So sometimes they are not, they are not the, the words that you want just to express or uh, you are not able to uh, to remember them it's something related to your memory you are not able to, uh, to 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 consider in which situation that you are going to use and this is the most important point okay you know them but you don't know uh, the uses for these uh, words okay uh, the, the words that you know and you use you know the meaning and you know the uses while the words that you know only, you don't know the, the, uh, in which situations they are used accurately, um, appropriately. And appropriately. Uh, yeah, you see yes. now. So here, your uh, uh, inability to 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 consider the uses will hinder. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, their. Uh, I mean, uh, their what well, their use or to be considered as the words that you use. Why? Because you are not flexible enough enough sorry to what to 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 consider the, the the uses you know them it's okay but can i use it in this situation can i use it in that situation no you are not sure and that's why you are not going to use them at all because here mentally you are going to uh, to consider that uh, they are going to be wrong uh, or they are not going to be understood in in the way that you are going to use or you are not going to remember them because uh, once you are going to see them in a text you are going to, to know the meaning but they are not going to exist in your mind every time so doctor the second kind of vocabulary we have a lack in appropriate appropriateness yes yes not only this yeah. not only this it is it is it is related to your mental activities can you remember them all the time? Sometimes you see now, uh, you see uh, here, if you uh, consider even uh, here, there is a situation that we have, okay? Now I'm doing most of the time talking about the, the lecture, okay? So I'm, I'm here using uh, vocabulary that I know to, to make you understand what, 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 what I have in the book or in the textbook, this is one. Second, I'm trying just to make my, my language as simple as possible because this is my own duty just to simplify the material, okay? So here, I'm not here just to think of difficult words or words that you don't know, okay? Sometimes I'm using them here and there. Maybe you are going to discover that these words are used by me, but you, you don't know how, it, how, to, how to be used by you got the point now so here that is that is what we call uh, language use and the words that you know and the words uh, maybe you are listening to words that that i use okay but it is not, it is not necessary that you are going to use them personally is that okay yes yes, yes, yes okay. Okay. And if I'm going to uh, uh, ask you uh, frankly, uh, 
throughout your uh, i mean listening to the or re-listening to the to the lectures that uh, were recorded uh haven't you come across a, a word or an expression that i use that you don't know actually when you it, it discuss happened, your language yeah yeah when, when you re-listen to my style. own lectures okay uh, haven't you uh, come across a word or an expression that i use okay o although that i'm i'm trying just to what to repeat the expressions that that are to be used by me normally uh, to make you accustomed or familiar with the words and expression that I say because here my job is just to simplify not to complicate maybe yes. you are going for to me find personally something. I find that yeah. Ali uh, know and understand all the words yeah uh, uh, however but, I do okay. not uh, use them comparatively with with other lectures maybe for example literature you are going to have, uh, for example, lots of vocabulary that are not to be understood when they are to be yes, said by the yes. teacher. Yes, yes, yes. Right? You see now? Right. And that's yes. why. That's why you see now. This is just to check the the, the difference between uh, the vocabulary that you know and the voca vocabulary that you use because they are not used. They are literary vocabulary. <clears throat> and here, this that is a vocabulary we use and vocabulary we understand. The former are active or productive uh, vocabulary, and the later, passive or receptive or recognition vocabulary. You see now, here when we say passive, again it is not completely passive because you see now you can draw an image in your mind, but you are not going to add to realize it, and that's that. That's why we say it. Passive. You know, but you don't know. Okay. Let us see yes, here Dr. more, more. Yes. This is uh, like listening. Uh, we 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 didn't we don't realize. So yeah, well, yeah. We, you listen to certain vocabulary and words, but you are not going to say them. You are not going yes. to uh, make them out. Okay. They are they are going to be kept in your mind. Uh, okay, we are going to, uh, I mean, explain them more, uh, uh, I mean, specifically in these two points. Active vocabulary is the number of words which you use in speech and writing over which you have complete control. And this is, this is the condition I want you just to consider. What is it? Complete control and mastery. This is called also, uh, uh, working vocabulary. And where is it from person to person? And this is very important. What does it mean? You are not going to have the, the same vocabulary store for for, lang for 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 use, okay? Each one has his own vocabulary store, and this is what we call individual differences related to what? Language development and vocabulary store for each learner. Passive vocabulary, receptive or recognition vocabulary. You see now, what to be put between two brackets? Because they are not always passive. Uh, here, receptive, you are going to have it and you are going to recognize it. When you, we listen to words used by others, uh, or when we read books, we can come across many words whose meaning we recognize, though vaguely, we, we cannot ourselves use those words in our speech and writing because we are not sure of what of their exact meaning and that's why you see here that's why we are not able to use it because we are not sure maybe i'm, I'm going to use them wrongly and that's why i'm, I'm not going to uh, i mean have this uh, let me say uh, attempt because basically or yes. uh, previously I'm going to have something in, in my mind it is useless to use it without knowing um, what does it mean these new words help us to guess the meaning from the context you see now so here just to consider are they completely passive no 
because they are used to guess meaning from the contents that we need us to get uh, or to discover the meaning from the dictionary got the point now what does it mean here uh, if you are going to have for example a passage in comprehension you are going to read line by line and then you are going to discover wh wh what are the words that you know and what are the words that you don't know and then you are going to use these words to guess the meaning of the unknown words so there is a function for the words that you know so it will be used to guess the meaning of the unknown uh, words is that okay and that's why yes, if yes, I no, say, no. Uh, 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 um, I mean um, uh, passive words are they completely passive or not they are not completely passive no. because they are used yes. to uh, to guess the meaning of unknown words especially in what in in uh, written form uh, when we have reading then we have another uh, thing just to consider words could be classified into concrete and abstract this is related to what to tangibility you know the word tangibility this is another yes. criteria you see now how many criteria do we have for uh, describing words you see now whether concrete or, or abstract uh, uh, passive or active content and uh, and structure these these are cri uh, different criteria you see now with with content words and structure this is a grammar with active and passive that, that is related to uh, use with concrete and abstract this is related to what tangibility you know when i say pen pencil these are tangible words you know that is i can i can uh, have it in my my hand and i i can check it i can see it okay but if i say if i say for example <clears throat> beauty we cannot touch or can i can i touch it it is untangible but it can be seen for example okay but when i say for example uh smell okay smell you know smell smell yes. perfume okay yes. okay smell okay for example nice smell can i can i see it of course i cannot see it it is untangible it, it cannot be seen but it can be what it can be sensed, it can be sensed, it can be felt, you see now, so they are, they are to be recognized mentally, mentally or they, if they are going to be considered, they are not going to be tangible, they are not going to, sometimes they are to be seen, but uh, most of the time, and it depends on the vocabulary itself, okay, this is the idea. <clears throat> uh, concrete noun is a noun which refers to a physical thing you see now rather than uh, yes. quality state or action or for example book house and machine are concrete nouns a noun which refers to quality you know quality state or action is got to be a abstract noun yes. so this is a definition between a different uh, differentiation between the two for example happiness idea okay happiness how can you consider happiness is it to be tangible? No, but it, it can be it can be what? Felt. It can felt. be felt, felt. and yes. it can be seen if, if there is an indication of happiness. For example, laughter or let me say smiling. Okay, <coughs> and uh, punishment, for example. How can how can we consider the word punishment? Is it is it uh, to be tangible punishment? No, it can be felt because uh, punishment can be uh, physical or psychological okay you can punish physically by using for example a stick or that you see now to punish somebody okay or psychologically so if it is psychologically it can be what it can be felt felt and if it is physical it, it can be seen okay but the pain the pain of punishment can be can be uh, can be seen no it can be felt yes. classroom effect, teaching the, yes effect of punishment can be seen the effect of effect. punishment can be seen yes if it is to be yeah uh, if it is to be felt it it can be seen 
okay here what does it mean if, if uh, somebody is to be punished by using for example harsh harsh words you know harsh words or has harsh you know the word harsh yes, H -A -R -S -H, harsh words okay uh, that makes uh, I mean uh, yes. uh, may, uh, that, that makes uh, people but cry for example okay physically again if, if we are using a stick for example to, pu to punish somebody okay again it, uh, it it is I mean the result of this punishment will be crying and it will be seen. Classroom teaching techniques. Okay. If we want just to add, to teach grammar, what, uh, to, to teach sorry vocabulary, what we are going to do? Decide which vocabulary items you wish to teach for the first time. There should be no more than ten of these items, and ideally they should be pulled from a reading comprehension text that students will read. Normally. We are going to have what? We are going to have a, 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 a reading text in which we are going to what? To uh, uh, specify certain vocabulary, new new uh, words to be given to students. So we are going to decide these words. Then prepare interesting pre-reading activities. What are these things? Using vocabulary. Provide many new uh, opportunities for students to encounter the world. This can be done by showing the, the word using picture or flashcard. That, that is the use of what this is what we call pre-reading uh, activities using teaching aids. Provide opportunities for students to recognize the word in a variety of contexts using sentences. Okay, how can I how can I recognize the meaning? by using examples, sentences, describing pictures, and playing games. A good elementary level of game is I Spy. What is I Spy? That is a game where we, you describe a word and students have to guess the word. That is, can be done verbally or non-verbally. What does it mean? You can describe the word by using certain expression orally. That is what verbal. Okay? For example, uh, uh, you are going to describe uh, uh, the word, okay? For example, washing machine. You are going to say a machine which is used to. What is what? What is the meaning? Okay. What is the word for for the uh, for the machine that we are going to use to to wash uh, clothes? Okay. You are going to put it as a question. That is verbal. Or you can use. A uh, body movement to explain uh, uh, here the word. Okay, so this will be non-verbal, non-verbal. And there was uh, 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 an Egyptian program. Uh, it is it is um, it is named Min uh, Kalam. I don't know whether you have an idea about this because yes, yes. this is a very yes, very too. old. Uh, uh, program okay in which words will be expressed through what through body movements okay yes in the way that the others will guess the meaning throughout the movement and this is non-verbal got the point now uh, yes. Uh, yes yeah for example you are going to have facial expression to, to express the meaning of angry or happy or laughing okay so you are going to have non-verbal uh, 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 let me say technique just to express the meaning and then they are going to guess this is what we call I spy non uh, verbally or non -verbal. where you describe a word or students uh, sorry uh, students have to guess the, uh, the word this game can be played in groups you see in the groups individually or with the entire class uh, when uh, planning a recognition type activity include a variety of activities you see now how teaching language is interesting you see you can formulate a game you know a game to make them you see now 
uh, to make them enjoy it, to make them feel interested, the, 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 to make them feel relaxed, and then you are going to achieve your aim to teach them. You see now, how is it interesting when you are going to teach a language? Yes. Games. You see now, it is a game. It is a game. But you see now, here, what I need you just to be as a future teachers, think of it this way. Do not think of, uh, I mean, uh, a lesson as a burden. You know, burden, B-U-R-D-E-N. Yes. 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 Uh, make your students feel relaxed, feel enjoyed, okay? And they need, uh, they need just to, not to feel time, okay? Do not make boring lessons in the way that students, okay, say, well, what is the time? Okay, 10 minutes, oh, we are going to have 30 minutes, okay, to finish with this lesson. No, we need them just to, say, okay, say, well, that's the end of the lesson. Oh, we miss all, all, all the other things, okay? We need just to, to have more and more. This is what we need, okay? And that's why we are emphasizing games. And do not forget that we are talking about CLT, okay? Where enjoyment mm -hmm. is something necessary. And that's why we are talking about vocabulary, teaching according to CLT. <coughs> Uh, okay, activities need to need not uh, to be too much challenging. Uh, should motivate and interest them uh, uh, to learn language. As we said, that we are going to make them feel enjoyed and trusted. Uh, for progress from recognition style activities to production based activity, what does it mean? Here, you have to know that you are going to teach vocabulary to make them use them later on in other stages. So what does it mean? Do not stick on one level to make them recognize, yes, this is the first step. But what is this next step? You are going to make them able to, to use them later on when, when these things are to be repeated and, and things will be explained how to use them, which requires students to do... Uh, something else with the word uh, other than simply recognize the, its meaning. Spe spelling bees and short creative writing assignments where students brainstorm around the targeted vocabulary word from a list uh, are a few uh, such activities. Yeah. Uh, five prepare assessments that combine both recognition and production based act, uh, tasks here, when we talk about recognition and production, we have two uh, tests. With the recognition, we are going to have uh, multiple choice, for example, okay, to choose the correct uh, option. Okay, that is the recognition level. And here, with electronic exams, you know, with electronic exams, with with the yes. with, with, with the exams that we we normally do, okay, that is recognition. With the production, no, we are going to make learners use to produce something, to do something. That is what, for example, it's like that, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, that yeah that just like a say, a say exam, a say exam. Okay, yeah. Circle around a variety of learning styles for your audio tape learners. Use more di uh, dictation practice activities while your visual learners could benefit from more picture use, especially when. Uh, learning uh, the word for the first time. What does it mean? Vary your teaching aids. What does it mean? Audio, pictures, okay, uh, exercises. Uh, here, reinforce. You know the word reinforce. Reinforce the, uh, the the new material. Do not put it in in one side, okay? Because you see now you have uh, students of different levels. Uh, one students can understand from the first uh, exposure. The other need just to have uh, other tool to, to help him to understand. Pictures, audio, uh, exercise, all these things, uh, games, vary. May, uh, ha have a variety of activities just to be uh, given uh, in, in, in uh, I mean, in a lesson, the way that students can understand in this way or that way, uh, the way that it's suitable for him. Uh, is that okay? 
Yes, yes, yes. Vocabulary teaching activities. Let us see the activities that are to be done by learners. You see now, we we move from teachers and then to go to learners. What can they do? While there are unlimited uh, opportunities for learning a new vocabulary, okay, in a real life situation, classroom setting can be difficult to place to set up meaningful situation in, uh, uh, in which a student will find himself naturally confronted by new vocabulary and, and the need to learn or to use it. Here, there is a problem. Although we are doing most of, of the activities in, uh, inside the class, but you see now, uh, a class is not uh, providing everything. Okay, what does it mean? If we compare the class with the real life situation, of course, the class will be limited uh, atmosphere, you know, limited atmosphere, or it is a limited setting. Uh, comparatively with the words used and the situations that are to be given to students, uh, 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 okay, just to, uh, to use them in real life situations. And that is the difficulty. What does it mean? Here, we can practice, yes, but uh, this uh, practice will be limited, will be, uh, will be of, uh, of, of, let me say, a restricted atmosphere, you know the atmosphere. Still, you have what? Yes, yes. You have, uh, yeah, you have something that you can do, but what you can do is what? Is still little. You need just to have things, because if it is to be compared with a uh, real life situation, uh, Okay, uh, it is it is it is not enough. It is not sufficient. So what we are going to do? The following ideas for vocabulary work uh, in, in in a class may not be equal to the authentic real life situation, but they are useful. Okay, we are we are not going to say they are what equal, but they are useful. They they can do something. Okay. Uh, Number one is what? Brainstorming. This is useful for revision and for the introduction of a new uh, uh, words. This technique can be used as a warm-up exercise or as a way to teach new vocabulary. What does it mean? You know brainstorming? A quick and, uh, uh, let me say, straightforward questions to, to refresh the, the minds of students. That is, that is a technique. To make them to to make their vocabulary store ready. What does it mean? Of course, they are going to to, to address past experience. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, vocabulary or let me say the vocabulary store they they have for the new vocabulary. What do we? For example, we, we are going to say certain questions to make the students' mind prepared for uh, for the new vocabulary. What do we call this and that? What do we uh, here? Who can tell me what, what, what does this mean? Uh, who can give me some a similar word for this uh, for the word that is introduced for this lesson? So here, brainstorming will be a technique, and it will be an activity to be done inside a class to make students prepared. Okay, to to make them address their own past experience, uh, 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 language background or past experience. Or the, or the vocabulary so they they have to manage with the new vocabulary. So quick and uh, uh, straightforward questions will will do. Okay, this technique can be used as a warm up, uh, warm -up uh, exercise or a, as a way to teach new vocabulary. Teachers write a single word in the middle of the board and ask the students to brainstorm any words that they uh, can think. Of the uh, of that are connected to to the word in the, on some way that is the synonym. Teachers write down all suggestions with the line connecting. So you see now these these are the activities that are to be uh, organized by the teacher, and we are going to see what can the the students do, and that's why we are saying activities, activities that are designed or organized by the teacher. Okay and it is described here as the way that learners are going to struggle with the new vocabulary okay brainstorm 
okay and these are the, the ways that we are going to do with, with, with the uh, uh, students asking them just to to give uh, new vocabulary or the vocabulary that they have to to uh, what to match with the new vocabulary okay and to give the possible meaning teachers write down all suggestions with a line connecting them to the original word you see now so we are going to make just like a tree or a, a, what you call a star then at the end of the exercise there will be a star like diagram of associated vocabulary what are the vocabulary the vocabulary that are provided by what by students okay and we are going to say which is near to the meaning of the new word associated with vocabulary linked to the original word students will have had the opportunity to learn new words suggested by others that they did not uh, know at the beginning of the lesson you see now that is the usefulness the, uh, the outcome of this exercise so is that okay with the uh, with the brainstorm yes that's right so it yes, is a quick, a quick and straightforward activity in which students are delivering directly okay at the moment okay the possible words and you see who is going to have uh, the correct one then two identifying uh, known words this is a morale bo uh, boosting uh, uh, exercise in, in that uh, it stresses that students know rather than what they do not know that is the recognition what are the new words and what are the words that you know here especially is used with the, with the uh, text uh, it uh, also encourages students to cooperation peer teaching in a class students are giving a text and asked to underline all the words that they know they are then split into groups to share their knowledge they must explain what they know to others who don't know in english okay who don't know the meaning yeah, in english at the end of the exercise each group presents their remaining unknown words which are thrown open to the floor for discussion and explanation by the whole class you see now the stages recognizing the known words and the unknown words and these these will be not the same what does it mean each student has his own vocabulary store and with cooperation the one who knows tell the the the, the, the other who does not know so in this case still we have unknown words till the end of the activity we are going to see what are the common unknown words and by uh, explanation uh, well, well, it will be clear for all students clear or not just now yes that's clear oh. yes uh, this method is built entirely around the students as the teacher only uh, intervenes at the end uh, as a last resort it if students are not able to explain a word accurately any question any question no no doctor but this point emphasizes the fluency uh, aspect as we already said yeah of course right yeah, we, we, with, with yes. the students cooperation we, uh, you see now uh, we said that earlier in CLT we have a community that is what students are not working individually they are to be put as groups and they are going to cooperate and they are going to use language and with this here we have uh, uh, some sort of, of, of let me say um, uh, mutual you know mutual uh, interest and mutual usefulness I know something okay you know something we are going to exchange and then uh, both of us we are going to know the things that we don't know now the other technique fill in the blanks students are split into groups and given a text in which words have been removed you know fill in the blanks their task is to fill in the blanks with the correct words teachers can provide a list of possible words for uh, weaker groups okay 
and let stronger groups guess without a backup list. You see now, here we are going to tackle different uh, levels, okay? For weak uh, students, we are going to have what? A list of uh, possible vocabulary. While for the uh, clever, or let me say, um, uh, good students, no, they are not going to be provided with the list. They can guess. This exercise is not only effective for learning and revising vocabulary, but for learning correct grammar, tense, um, tense grammar, yeah, what does it mean? It means that it is not to consider uh, the words that are, uh, that are removed and to be filled in the, uh, in the blank um, meaningfully, no. Uh, because we are talking about the position of this word and the position is, uh, is related to grammar can i put a uh, word yes, yes. Uh, yeah. this uh, is can i can i put a word which is basically uh, a noun in, in the position of a verb can i put an adverb no. instead of, you see so here grammar will be checked also there are some classroom devices what does it mean devices i mean uh, uh, here uh, students can rely on the devices that are tools, if we, if we consider, okay, by which vocabulary of, uh, of our students can be expanded. How can we expand vocabulary depending on wh which, uh, 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 let me say, device or, or tool? Number one, word chains or expansion through association or connection. Key, uh, keyword garden, for example, uh, putting words into cat categories. In this case, students can maximize their own vocabulary and put them into uh, kinds. And in this case, there is association with the kind. And then in, in this case, uh, it will be easier for them just to collect and uh, keep their own vocabulary. Families of words, that is uh, morphologically speaking, how can we um, uh, derive, you know, the word derive, uh, from, uh, how can I yes. derive a, uh, a noun from a verb? Teach, teacher, teaching, okay, teachable, okay, uh, here, uh, here by using what suffixes? A base word is given uh, and other forms of, of word with uh, prefixes, suffixes, uh, uh, may be uh, given by students agree agreeable agreement disagreement okay uh, this will be um, uh, useful for a student just to what to know from a single word different words by adding suffixes okay or uh, prefixes okay we are going to derive you know the word derivation derivation by using derivation, we are going to maximize our vocabulary by having uh, uh, different words uh, using prefixes or uh, suffixes. Yes, any questions? Yes, doctor. Yeah. No, no, it's clear. A variety of prepositions are used with simple, uh, 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 I mean, verbs. You see now with the preposition, we are going to add another meaning. Okay. Uh, take an example, look, the word look, look at, look for, look after. You see how many, how many meanings? Look at, okay, is different from look for, which is, which is the meaning of search. Look after, it means to treat, okay? Look around. Yes. Okay. Uh, these, these, different meanings by using, uh, I mean, um, prepositions will add to our vocabulary store, okay? Uh, what else? Fill in the blanks with the other forms of the, of the word, okay? Uh, verb, thank, okay? Noun, what is, what is the noun of thank, okay? What is the adjective of thank? What is the adverb of thank? You see now, if it is possible just to have these things, okay? So here we are going to put them in this way to 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 uh, to examine students' ability. How can they derive from this word other words? Word games, <clears throat> words of word games. We said that I spy, as we uh, explained earlier. Words of size, 
okay for for the side we have path roads highway lane okay again uh, just like uh, categories is that okay so these are the devices or yes, the tools yes. that make students maximize their vocabulary store techniques and strategies to develop spelling now uh, you see now this is a neglected uh, uh, i mean uh, notion or let me say uh, aspect of language okay and again uh, we said that we have to draw draw uh, a relationship between spelling and vocabulary english is not a, a, pho a phonetic language and this is what wh what we said earlier okay there is no one to one relation between letters and sounds and this will complicate yes, yes. matters for spelling with many spelling being not only regular but also logical you see now with the spelling also we don't have all the same we have regularity and irregularity okay how can we make a plural uh, we we add s but is it does it go with all uh, i mean uh, words no how can we pluralize man no. okay, man yeah we okay. have irregular so here man. we have regularity and irregular with the with the verbs also with with the past form or with the with the um, past participle okay all these things will not be the yes, same doctor. okay yeah By yeah not be the same we have a lot of yeah, yeah. So here, regularity and irregularities so Students, if they generalize, you know, generalize, they they, they are yeah, going yeah, to have general, mistakes oh, yeah, and errors. Yeah, okay? yeah. yeah, and this and is this what is happened uh, with children. children. So it, it it is chaotic, you know, chaotic because it has borrowed. Uh, when we talk about yes. English, what to say? Because here uh, there are so many words that are brought from other languages. You see, Greek, uh, okay, and Latin. Do you know that most of the uh, vocabulary that are used in medicine, in English, is Latin? Yes, because there is very you, know, uh, yes. you know the word phenomenon? Phenomenon, phenomena. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, criteria, criterion. Criterion is the yeah. singular. Criteria is the, uh, uh, yes. the plural. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Curricula, curriculum. Curricula, curriculum. I mean, the word that that you have in the first course, if I remember. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we take it in a grammar. Are, these are, uh, uh, even the way uh, of regularity and irregularity. Do you know that this is borrowed? Do you know that basically, when we say man, men, woman, women, do you know that this is this is uh, originally is German? This is the German way of uh, having uh, plural. Plural. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, do you know that uh, English is a Germanic language, uh, originally speaking? If you look at the European yeah. languages, okay, you have two, uh, I mean, uh, two families, Teutonic language, Teutonic languages and Germanic languages. Under this categories, these two categories, in Teutonic language, what do we have? French, Spanish, Italian, okay? Uh, uh, these are yes, uh, uh, these are similar if you if you consider in their own structure in their own uh, you see now if you check uh, italian and spanish you can see so many similarities you see personally i um, uh, i met uh, some uh, spanish uh, um, i mean citizens or tourists uh, where, while i uh, i was abroad and i asked them yes. about certain vocabulary that are used uh, um, I'm uh, listening to some some words. Uh, uh, at first, I, I uh, 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 thought that they are Italian, but they are saying that no, we we are we are Spanish. So there are yes, some doctor. similarities here and there. English is one of the Germanic languages, not Teutonic. Under this category, what do we have? We have German, we have yeah. Dutch, yeah. we have German, yes. we have Dutch, and we have English. Okay. Uh, uh, these, yes. these languages are uh, belo belong to the same family, and that's why we have something borrowed from uh, uh, German language. That is the plural. From these, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yes. and it doesn't mean that uh, uh, it should be the same family just to have something borrowed. No, we have uh, some words that are borrowed from French. 
you know, uh, cliche, you know, cliche, cliche is what? Is a French word that is used in English. Pricey, you know, pricey. Pricey. Yes, pricey. Yeah. the French uh, I mean, word. Yes, yeah, French. French. Yeah, this is French. It is French, when, yes, yes. you are going to see uh, a mark on uh, above the, the word, you are going to consider that this is not English. Pardon, you know the word pardon? Pardon uh, uh, is, is yes. French, basically is a French. It's a French. So, lots of words that are borrowed, yeah. you see. Uh, and this will make uh, uh, you see uh, some sort of mistakes and uh, general uh, because we have generalization what does it mean uh, if we have a general rule we are going to over generalize th this rule and we are going to make a mistake okay uh, when we are going to yes, generalize doctor. something irregular as uh, to be considered as irregular we are going so this is related to spelling mistakes so students yes, commit mistakes in the spelling in fact you see now what are the reason behind these things well we have the case of regularity and irregularity and uh, if we talk about english we have what we call uh, uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, case of um, uh, of unequality between sounds and letters this is this is the, the point that we uh, mentioned earlier since we we pronounce words unlike uh, the way that we what we uh, write okay so uh, suppose that you have two words that are pronounced uh, uh, the same way but uh, uh, they are different in in orthographic representation yes, yes. the yes. word right right it means the, the opposite of left okay r i g h t and the word right yes uh, okay that is w r i t e uh, they are pronounced same yes, doctor a lot good. of yeah yeah a lot so of many words. examples if you consider mm -hmm. that is the, the uh, because of the inequality between sounds and letters as we said that english is not a phonetic language unlike arabic you see now with arabic we we uh, the same letters the doctor, same, like the same sound. yeah yeah same yeah. letters what we, same what sound. we say okay. we are written yeah 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 this is as, the as you letter. say it as you write it okay this yeah, is yeah yeah we yeah. don't have silence yes okay but so what, what arabic we have, uh, phonetic we, we yeah have, we phonetic have language. What, we, what we call no uh, we have something similar just like when we we have uh Al Ahraf al Shamsiya, Al Ahraf al Qamariya. We say Al Shams. Yeah. Uh, we we yeah. write yes. uh, the letter Lam, but we are we are not going to pronounce it. Just like yeah. we yeah. have the letter K. In uh, okay, it is not. Yeah, in in in, 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 in word, word no, no. yeah, mm -hmm. like, like no K. So and spelling auto. is a complex sensory uh, motor process. This is very 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 important. Why to say? Uh, complex sensory motor process because here we have the connection of something visual and something to be uh, uh, audible or uh, or something it is what uh, what is to be called auditory here here we have two mental processes two mental confronting you know struggling uh, processes uh, adding to the, the uh, to, to these things uh, these uh, complications and and differences so it will be complex why because we are going to have two confronting two uh, struggling processes that are happening in our mind because we are going to listen to something differently to be written you see how how can we have uh, uh, two uh, complex processes in our mind, yes. we are going to have what well, some sort of differences. We listen to something that is to be written differently. If it is the same, it is okay. It is not complex. But if it is different, it will be complex. Because here, we are going, normally we are going to associate here, mental speaking, okay? Mental speaking, association between what is spoken and uh, what is to be received through spoken form and uh, the written form will be associated automatically automatically but here if there is some sort of differences this um, automation will be what 
will be hindered will be will be what will be uh, uh, I mean uh, 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 blocked okay in this case here we are going to have a complex uh, activity mental activity that is what to uh, this association will be what will be broken this automated you know this automated uh, 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 association will be broken because uh, because they are different and that's why we we are saying that this is what this is a, a complex sensory motor process what to say motor process because it is to be automated you know it, it is done automatically Got the point or yes. not just tell me i need yes, you yes, just yes, to yes. consider this is this is a very 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 important point it is motor because it is automatically, automatically. Uh, done the association is found whether we need just to, to, to do it or not association is found but here we are going to okay uh, deal with this complication if they are different okay so uh, we deal with this okay although we have an automated uh, 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 association between sounds and uh, written form here uh, the efficiency of which is based on, on repeated motor uh, reactions in, uh, to, to sensory stimuli. What does it mean? That is the solution. Repetition. 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 What does it mean? First of all, we are going to be exposed to something which is what? Which is different, from, uh, I mean, in, in sounds and in, in written form. In pronunciation and in written form. But with repeating this word, in using them, in, in writing them, this will, will prepare a stimuli, you know, a stimuli that is you are going to be uh, uh, unconsciously stimulated just to do something correct. What does it mean? You are going to be uh, unconsciously, unconsciously aware that there is a difference between you. See now, here this is the process. The process is by itself it is automated but with repetition uh, the solution will will be uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, getting the mind prepared okay that is the uh, uh, there is uh, let me say irregularity uh, 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 to, to deal with uh, such words that is what here we are going to be stimulated or to be, uh, uh, let me say, uh, triggered by uh, by preparing ourselves that uh, to to what uh, to consider that there are differences between sounds and letters in such words. Why? Because it is repeatedly said or repeatedly orth uh, uh, orthographically uh, represented, and in this case, it is okay. To make things if there simpler, is yeah, to, to make things simpler to you. F for the first time that uh, you, you have the uh, the word that uh, we, we we write the the, the K and then uh, we we uh, we are not we are not pronounce it uh, but we 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 write it. From the first thing uh, that you have, you find difficulty, but. With the repetition now, if I ask you, do you feel a difficulty to uh, to write the word no? Oh, doctor, actually no. Why? Because there is a repetition. Because it is repeated a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is used a lot of uh, a lot of time. So you are going yeah. to be prepared mentally to write it differently uh, of of what is to be spoken or yeah, what yeah. is to be. And this uh, is and this okay. is happened with a lot of of word that uh, that we write a K uh -huh. and we know. And to the same thing it. that you are going to face if you are going to have a word, okay, for the first time. Once you are going to repeat it, this will be this will be over. Mentally, yeah. Mentally. By the way, this is this is what is happening mentally. This is what is happening mentally. Yes, doctor. Yes, because of the practice, doctor. Because we make it a lot, so mm -hmm. it will be. Uh, 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 and that's why you see now uh, the, the matters will be uh, resolved in this case. Matters will be resolved in this case. 
In other words, uh, mastery in spelling is possible when proper auditory and visual impressions face with the articulatory and graphic motor responses. What does it mean? Once you are going to be, uh, I mean, using these things uh, repeatedly, things will be resolved. Uh, <coughs> Uh, so spelling is a, a case of visual auditory or motor sense uh, memory okay again uh, it is related to your memory of course because this will be fixed in your mind okay and uh, whenever it is to be used you are going to write it correctly the following are uh, techniques that help in developing the spelling abilities of students what are the things that help you just to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, um, to, to control uh, spelling? Visual, uh, oral, and motor activities such as writing difficult words on the board or, or charts. This, uh, this is uh, the look and say technique, you know? Look and say technique. Yes, yes, yes so doctor. To look at the, the board to the, uh, and to draw the association between the two uh, after this step uh, linking the visual and auditory images with uh, writing uh, words and pronouncing them correctly then after this step what uh, uh, here we are going to link between what is to be seen okay and with the, with with what, what is to be said <coughs> then so here, first of all, we have exposure, and then we have the linkage, and then we are going to, to use a technique that is dictation. You see, with dictation, we are, we are not going to, to have something to be, uh, uh, to be seen, no. Uh, we are going to write depending on what we hear, what we listen to. Got the point now? So here, the linkage will not be found um, physically, but they are, they are going to be found mentally. We listen, we write. That is dictation. Words group uh, prepared by students, spelling game, spelling test, words uh, spelt li alike uh, are grouped together, putting uh, uh, jumbled letters on, on cards to make meaningful words, writing list of words that are usually spelt incorrectly and hung on the wall to see uh, and remember the spelling by students. So recognizing the, the incorrect uh, spelling and then uh, we'll put them on, on, uh, on uh, the board just to remember wh what is to be uh, done correctly. Then uh, uh, the last thing, using dictionary. With this, we finalize uh, our lecture. Okay. Yes, doctor. Chapter. Thank you very much, doctor, uh, for your discussing. Uh, thanks a lot. But you see, unfortunately, you know how many numbers do I have for for? Uh, yeah, yeah, for doctor. I I noticed this. Unfortunately, 40, yeah. 42, 42 students. You know why? Because averages are given uh, already, and that's it. In, <laughs> no, um, unfortunately, I mean, that's happened here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That is to, minim, uh, to, to recognize who are the good students and who deserve, you see now, uh, Marx uh, indicated these things, no, no way just to say, okay? Yes. Uh, yes, doctor. And you see now, even, even with, the, with, with, the, uh, with the list, you see now, with, with the, um, uh, the list for names, you see now, you, do you know how many? They are 88. They are 88. Comparatively with other uh, lectures, I have 140, 160. Okay. Yes, doctor. Yeah. Yes, yes. We know the reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We know the reason. Now, <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, uh, here, the, uh, the, the result will be in the final examination. They cannot recognize, even if they if they uh, have the recorded lecture. Okay. Even if they have. Yes, it, doctor. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, if it is. If it is, uh, uh, I mean, online uh, will be better because you see now uh, there is an opportunity to ask uh, the teacher about the, the things that yes. are not understood. And that's why here uh, we have uh, my own recognized students here in, 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 in my uh, lecture now because they are 
uh, already with their own comments, with their own uh, questions, with their own, uh, I mean, uh, points that they raised in the lecture. And this is what is happening. Um, uh, uh, students who are, uh, are uh, I mean, available now, who are available from the beginning of the year. I mean, even with the, with the, with the uh, other course. First course, yeah. Of, yeah. yeah of, of research. You see now? Uh, thanks a lot for everything. We are and thankful. I, thank you I very can, much. I can, uh, 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 let me say, um, explain these things more clearly. Um, I suggest just to re-listen once again, just to take notes, because you see, uh, this is included in the final examination. Yes, Doctor, inshallah. You have to consider the points that are raised. And if you have any question after re-listening to the lecture, I'm ready to <coughs> answer it, whether in the class or uh, privately, if you can use any other, uh, uh, let me say, media just to uh, deliver your question. Thanks a lot. For yes, 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 doctor. Everything is clear. Thank Good you luck. very Good much. Good luck for you all. Good luck Stop for you me. all, all the time. Thank you, doctor. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much, doctor. Thank you.